today on BRS TV Investigates, even though the AI Hydra 26 HDs have been discontinued, tons of you already own them, and we happen to have a few brand new ones in our closet. So today, we're giving them the full BRS TV Investigates test, then sharing our findings for all of you with Hydra 26s already over your tanks in order to help you optimize the lights you already own. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates, where we experiment on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And today, we're responding directly to those of you who asked us to circle back and test the Hydra 26 HD LEDs so that you too can have the data you need to optimize them for your tank instead of being left in the dark with your own best guess for how to set them up. Today we're sharing our BRS recommended settings for the most popular aqua illumination LED to date, the Hydra 26 HD, using the same two tank type goals that we use for all of our light testing approaches, and that is either a show tank full of eye-popping LPS like these tanks, or filled to the brim with large, mature SPS colonies like these reefers have achieved right here. Accomplishing those goals start with a recommendation for how many Hydra 26s we believe will be the best to get you there, and with that, we break this down into two very common tank sizes, either a two square foot 60 gallon cube or a 120 gallon four foot by two foot tank, which is essentially 260 cubes put side by side. So in that 60 gallon cube tank filled with Blastos, Acans, Duncans, Hammers, Torches, and a plethora of other LPS, Zoanthids, Pallies, and Soft Corals, we're about to show you how a tank like this can be possible with one single Hydra 26. However, as you would rightfully expect, accomplishing a stunning LPS tank in this 120 gallon system is as simple as doubling that recommendation and using two Hydra 26s to reach your goals. For those of you who are headed down that path of a tank completely filled with acros, millies, and other stunning SPS sticks, although a single Hydra 26 may not have the par output we're looking for on its own, in this 60 gallon 24 inch cube, you should definitely be able to create that type of show tank if you combine your 26 HD with some T5 fill light, much like this Aquatic Life T5 fixture. However, in a 120 gallon tank like our four foot test tank, we recommend harnessing multiple Hydra 26s to reach those same goals. In this case, we believe that four modules will be the optimal way to achieve that. Next up in our testing, we aim to find the optimal mounting height for the Hydra 26 by mounting a single light, starting at six inches off the water, setting all channels to 100%, taking a grid of measurements at six inches below the top of our 20 inch test tank, then raising the light inch by inch until we find a sweet spot where any hot spot in the center is reduced and the spread is more evenly distributed towards the outer edges of the tank. Starting with that initial look at the Hydra 26 mounted at just six inches off the water, we find a center hotspot of 685 and a lower par outer ring at just 59 par with a total average across the top of the tank at 217. Using this starting point, we continue to test as we raise the light where we check in at a mounting height at 10 inches off the water and see that we've now distributed the center hotspot down to 417 and out to the edges, which are now at 128 par, which means we've only lost a minimal 5% overall par average due to light spill out of the tank and we have room to improve even further. Our next mounting height check-in point is when we reach 12 inches off the water, where the center continues to improve now to 291 and the outer ring has risen to 148 with just a 12 percent loss of light spilling out of the tank at this mounting height we still have room to improve so we continued testing inch by inch where we stopped the test at 14 inches where we saw the most improvement to the center without losing over 15 percent efficiency so as we also found in our test of the latest hydra 32 hd our BRS recommended mounting height for the Hydra 26 is also 14 inches off the top of the water, where we see a decreased center hotspot of 261 par and an improved spread to the outer edges at 157. Now that we found our optimal mounting height for the Hydra 26, we dive in next to spacing multiple fixtures over our four foot, 120 gallon tank example, where again, we're looking for the optimal spacing between two and four Hydra 26s for both our LPS and SPS goals. For this test, we try to find that spacing sweet spot where we reduce the naturally higher par center of the tank where a majority of multiple lights intersect within that tank, while at the same time spread the light distribution as best we can towards more of the outer edges. The goal here is to increase the average par on the left and right edges to within or beyond 75% of the center average par and to start this test using two hydras per our LPS recommended number of fixtures over the same size of tank 
we begin with them mounted at 14 inches off the top of the water and centered evenly across 48 inches at 16 inches on center. At this 16 inch spacing, we find that the average par in the outer edge is indeed much lower than the center, testing at just 49%. We continue the test by spacing each light one inch further apart from each other, and here at 15 inches on center, we see a slight improvement to 58%, but still under our goal. At 14 inches on center, we get closer to that goal with a 148 outer average par, now within 67% of the 220 center. And finally, we stop the test with two Hydra 26s spaced at 13 inches on center, where we hit 79%, meaning that the par is now evenly spread across a larger majority of the tank, which makes a spacing of 13 inches our BRS recommended spacing for two Hydras, just like we found for its successor, the Hydra 32. Next, we run the same test for this spacing, this time with our SPS dominated four foot tank goal in mind, using our previously recommended four Hydra 26s to get the job done. Again, we mounted them each at the BRS recommended mounting height of 14 inches and then started the test with them spaced centered evenly across 48 inches at 9.6 inch increments. Looking to achieve the 75% or more even average par from the left and right edges to the center, what we found at this spacing is that the center 427 par where a majority of the all four lights intersect is still higher than what we're aiming for and the outside edges at only 65%. In order to spread the light out more evenly, we continue to test as we move the outer two Hydra 26s outward closer to the edges, as well as testing the effect of also moving the innermost 26s out towards the edges. Finally, after a half dozen configuration attempts in total, we found our BRS recommended spacing sweet spot with the lights mounted at 7 inches and 17.2 inches from the left edge and opposite of that 17.2 and 7 inches from the right edge of the tank which provided a stellar 86% average in the outer edges of the center par at 352 meaning that no matter where we place SPS across the length of this 48 inch tank we can trust that they will be optimally lit. For those of you looking to optimize the Hydra 26s already hanging over your reef we're going to get straight into our BRS recommended settings that you can use as templates or starting points to do just that. I will recommend that if you're considering making changes to your current lighting setup, the most successful changes will come from a subtle and gradual approach where added effort in making adjustments slowly will yield more positive results and avoid stressing an already established system. With that, we begin our BRS recommended spectrum ratio mix following our updated format for choosing a custom spectrum where we utilize as much of the available near UV, violet, and blue channels as possible to maximize PAR output, which means we set the UV and violet channels to 110% and the royal blue and blue channels to 115%. Then we add in available white channels to reduce that heavy blue look and balance out the tank aesthetically, which for the Hydra 26 we set to 50%. Lastly, we bring in a touch of red and green for coral and fish pop and color accents, where here we've set them each to 10%. Now that we have a recommended spectrum mix to use as a starting point, we're going to implement all of the BRS recommendations from today's testing into usable setting templates for our 60 and 120 gallon tank examples that you can tweak to meet your own tank goals and sizes as needed. Keeping in mind that to really know for sure you've got them set right, you'll wanna double check with a PAR meter. Our first set of BRS recommended settings is for those of you chasing a show-stopping LPS softy and polyp display tank in tank sizes similar to our 60 and 120 gallon test tanks. For these types of lower light demand corals, our goal is to create settings that fill the tanks with as much PAR between 75 and 150 as possible. So for our 60 gallon 24 by 24 inch tank, we recommend using a single Hydra 26 mounted at 14 inches off the water and using a scaled down version of our BRS recommended spectrum ratio with violet and UV set to 77%, royal blue and blue set to 81%, cool white to 35 in the red and green channel at 7%. Using these settings, we tested a whopping 100 out of 108 data points from the top to the bottom of the tank within our 75 to 150 par range goal for a total of 93% of the entire tank. Our 120 gallon system recommended settings is next, where again, we mount two Hydra 26s at 14 inches off the water and spaced at 13 inches on center from the edges of the tank. 
This time we turned down our BRS custom spectrum mix to UV and violet at 66%, royal blue and blue to 69, white set to 30%, and the reds and greens to 6, or basically 60% of our max spectrum ratio. Much like the 60 gallon cube in this 4 foot by 2 foot tank, we test 86% or 170 out of 198 points in that same 75 to 150 range throughout the tank and optimize for growing tanks full of Euphelia, Acans, Duncans, garden full of Zoas and Pallies. Now we take a look at those same tanks but with a higher par tank type goal in mind where we plan on filling them with acres of branching SPS corals and acros. For this goal, we're going to attempt to fill the tank with as much par as possible between 200 to 350, which we find we're not able to do using a single Hydro 26 over a 60 gallon cube. The reason being it's just not designed to be the right tool for this size of tank on its own, and because of that, we recommend using the larger brother, the Hydra 52 or 64, or adding in some T5 fill light to bridge the gap with some hybrid options like these, or some retrofit kits like this. However, that doesn't mean that the Hydra 26 can't support SPS, because it certainly can, especially when you harness multiple 26s together over the same tank, and as we've done with our four fixtures over our 120 gallon test tank. Here we recommend mounting them at 14 inches off the water surface, spacing them in this configuration from left to right, and then setting the spectrum ratio to 99% for UV violets, 104 for royal blue and blue, whites at 45%, and reds and greens at 9. If you follow these settings over the same tank size and shape, you can expect similar results to what we tested, where we found 82% or 162 out of 198 data points falling within the 200 to 350 par range that SPS seemed to thrive in. Alright, so many of you have questions about how to apply these settings for tanks longer than 4 feet, and I think with the help of a par meter, you could make some pretty well educated guesses, like using one Hydra 26 for every 24 inches of tank length for LPS, or two Hydra 26s for every 24 inches in SPS dominated systems, keeping in mind that the more fixtures you add, the more light intersection begins to play a role. As you can see, using more than one smaller light fixture has undeniable value for reaching you with PAR numbers you're looking for, but the real question is just how many smaller LED modules would you need to reach those same PAR numbers, and is the juice worth the squeeze? Which I'm sure you'll find the answer to in Ryan's AI Prime Light testing video over here.